me and Andy were mates at school, uh, and we. <laughs> saw John in another band. Yeah, that right? yeah, yeah. that's okay. it. I was older. Yeah, yeah, a bit, a lot older. About two years, <laughs> and uh, we kind of so we kind of poached him from another band, and then we saw Jim in another band. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> it was I'm as a, simple as that, really. And then we thought, yeah, we'll be a band. I met Andy at college and went to see you guys play, and then rang you and said, I really want to join the band, but I was playing guitar at the time, which you didn't want, and. But I think Fal was lead. the original bass player was going to college or uni. Yeah, so we knew each other. So there was a different band. Yeah. <clears throat> it was kind of a scene of school and college bands, and it kind of turned into well, who's the most committed and uh, radical in their musical <laughs> direction. I think collectively we were quite radical. <laughs> I, think, I think that's fair yeah, to well, say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking looking back at it, I didn't, th- I didn't think it at the time. Mm. I think no, it's no, just open no, no. Just no. open to doing yeah. something different, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and um, uh, in terms of being radical, <coughs> I, I just wonder sometimes, looking back, um, and w- we became something very radical, didn't we? But that was, I think, af- after we'd got signed, I think. Yeah. But essentially, the four of us were um, sick of what was going on musically. Mm. Um, and I'm not sort of dissing the sort of music scene in Derby but we we were very we never fit into anywhere in Derby and I think we kind of got a bit of a uh, bit of a sort of buzz off that the fact that we were we kind of stood on our own the name came quite early I think all bands obsess about the name mm. and ultimately I suppose it, I suppose it isn't that big a deal isn't the name um, because people just get familiar with whatever the name is and there's some Bizarre names out there that that, that become yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, bearing in mind we were very, very young, very young. And we, we just discussed it before we started this. I mean, Neil was eighteen when we signed to the world's biggest label. I mean, that is crazy. I was I was the old guy. I was twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> so so when we came up with a name, you'd have been what fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, we we were we were teenagers. We were kids. Mm. Mm. Um, I think the thing was as well, we were talking about it, the energy of it. And we weren't, we were definitely quite um, anti establishment in terms of there was a lot of money around at the record labels at the time. And the people we liked did the kind of independent thing. So it was quite weird for us to sign to a big label. Um, and that was really because there were people at the label who were into the same stuff as us. You know, they loved Mud Honey and early Nirvana and all that sort of stuff and uh, that was kind of where we were at you know in terms of believing that they were going to do things our way yeah and the guy that signed us I mean one of the first things he said is oh, I know the perfect band you can tour with and it was the Red Hot Chili Peppers and he was like well yeah they were the perfect band to tour with and uh, he got us on the um, but before, and you know, I mean, I didn't know about Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, no, one. no, I'd seen them a little bit in the music press. Yes, before they were on sort of MTV rotation. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was a really cool tour. But they were they were awesome, and uh, and and it was just an indication that the guys that signed us were sort of thinking the same way as us. The musical kind of landscape at the time was mm. just bloody awful. Mm. It was very straight, so straight very mainstream. Rock, wasn't very, it? Very, yeah, well, mainstream. There was no rock at all on daytime radio. But then the underground, you know, you got Faith No More, uh, you know, Public Enemy, yada yada, who hadn't quite broken to the size they did, and it was so kind of exciting, and you sort of forget that. I suppose now it's just a different thing. I think you got to look back. What this is all about is looking back and saying, overall, what an experience. You know, it's kind of you can get so wound up on the what's going to happen next week or whatever, you can't really say appreciate what's going on you know, at the time. Mm. Yeah. Best gig? Best, be, best gig many. to me, there, there, were, there were so many, but the one that stands out was um, we, were, we were supporting Living Colour uh, in Europe and, uh, and it was the gig in Rome. Oh, Rome was amazing. And it was in a huge tent, wasn't it? A circus it? tent. Wasn't circus it? tent, mm. massive thing. And it was like a football crowd. They were all singing, like the, the, like the Italian fans mm. were singing. As we went on, it was it was madly, it was amazing. Yeah, Spain, Italy. That was yeah, really Spain was incredible. Yeah. But uh, the Italian, it was like going 
going to play in front of a football crowd. Uh, and and they, they were just awesome. 